Today I have an SAT math trick for you that deals with setting up inequalities as you read through a math word problem. So this applies to the math no calculator section and the math with calculator section. So as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and let's go ahead and get into this. We have SAT practice test seven, and we're gonna be dealing with question nine. So what I wanna show you here is when I deal with question nine, as I go through it, one thing I immediately recognize just by glancing at the answer choices is that I'm gonna to have to set up a system of inequalities that would be used to solve this problem. Now, I don't actually have to solve the problem, I just have to find the correct system of inequalities that would be able to solve this problem. So now, the other thing that really jumps out to me here is that I've got four equations here. Okay, now, since I have four equations, I know I probably am not going to need all four of them because there's only four multiple choice things and they're going to flip signs and things like that. So I know I'll probably be able to solve this after finding two or three of the correct ones. I'll know that I have the right answer just by process of elimination since the other ones will have to be wrong. So as I go through here, my first time through, I'm just going to go through it and I'm going to teach you. And then the second time through, I'm going to show you why this saves so much time by going through how I would if I were taking the SAT. All right. So as I go through this, just Pay attention, I'll go slow the first time and then the second time I'll show you how you can do this really quickly. So we have Marissa needs to hire at least 10 staff members for an upcoming project. Thing that jumps out to me right away is it says at least 10. So if I go down here and I look at my things with 10, I know I need to have at least 10. I see an A that it has less than 10. So that immediately to me is suggesting that A is wrong. Then I look at B, I see it has greater than 10. I look at C, it has greater than 10. I look at D, it has less than 10. That again suggests to me that D is gonna be incorrect. So now I'm looking at B and C as my potential correct answers. I see the staff members will be made up of junior directors who will be paid 640 per week and senior directors who will be paid 880 per week. Now, I don't know which one X and Y is yet, but I know that I've got 640 and 880. I see all of them have that, so that's fine. Her budget for paying the staff members is no more than 9,700 per week. Key part here is no more. She can't spend more than 9,700. Therefore, 9,700 must be greater than that 640X plus that 880Y. Now I know I'm between B and C here because that part with 10, right, dealing there, I know that those both are correct here, so I can check mark those two. Next thing I'm looking at is it said no more than 9,700. I see in C, it shows it does have more. So I know C is wrong, I know B will be my correct answer, just based on that. And I'll go ahead and show you how I know that that's correct as I go through and it tells us what X and Y mean, right? We can go ahead and check our work. Um, if I was in a rush, I would just click B and, or select B and move on. Um, but if we did have, if, if we had plenty of time, wanted to check our work, we could go ahead and keep reading and I'll show you why that's correct. She must hire at least three junior directors, at least one senior director, which of the following system of inequalities represents conditions described. If X is the number of juniors, Y is the number of seniors, obviously it's got to add up to at least 10, right? X and Y do. So we know that A and D are automatically out. So then we're between B and C. And then obviously we know based on this top equation that B has to be correct. Okay, so obviously... That's a really quick way, thing that you can use when dealing with setting up systems and inequalities to find the correct answer very fast. Now, if I were going through this on my own and I wasn't explaining it to you, I'm just gonna show you how quickly I can get to this right answer. Um, if I was in a rush or if I just needed to move quick um, or was trying to move quicker than I normally do, right? Or for me, this would just be my natural pace because I can move through these problems pretty quickly. I just wanna show you how quick we can get to that correct answer of B. All right, so this is gonna be a non-slowed down version that I'm gonna go through right now. Okay, so I see the question nine, and this is how I'd approach if I were taking the SAT myself. Marissa needs to hire at least 10 staff members for an upcoming project. I go down, see which ones have greater than 10. I see that my only options here are gonna be B and are gonna be C, so I go ahead and get rid of D and I get rid of A. Next thing I'm looking at is whatever comes next in the problem. I have the staff members will be made up of junior directors paid 640, senior directors paid 880. Her budget for paying the staff members is no more than 9,700. Therefore, I need to have a less than or equal to 9,700. I see I have that in option B. Option C does not have that, C is out. A, C, and D are out, B must be correct. So just like that, B is correct. You see that I didn't even have to read from, uh, she must hire at least two senior directors. I didn't have to read any of that. So I'll go ahead and put that in green. Um, and you can see how much, just how much I actually got out of reading. I got out of reading all of that. Okay, just by using this. Now, obviously, if you had a bunch of extra time, you could go back, check your answer, make sure that X and Y mean what we think they mean, um, to check your work, make sure it's correct. But if you're in a rush, you can obviously tell that's gonna be correct. Even if you're not in a rush, you can kind of tell that's gonna be correct. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and have a great day.